This is a place in the Olympic Park that very few people get to see. It's a dressing room much like any other. White walls, a few benches and coat hooks. But it's in places like this, the nooks and crannies of Olympic venues, the gold medals will be won and lost. This is the inner sanctum, where the last few crucial moments are spent before stepping out into the megawatt light of the competition arena just a few yards down that corridor. It is here that athletes perform the highly secretive routines designed to take them into the zone. Here you will see some truly bizarre things. Some athletes in half trances pacing from foot to foot, others with their eyes closed, visualizing optimum performance. Some athletes enact bizarre superstitions, others offer silent prayers. In many ways, this is one of the most surreal places in sport, but also perhaps one of the most fascinating. Often, the final few moments before competition are highly solitary. You're alone with your thoughts or perhaps your demons. But in many sports, solitude is impossible. You're required to spend those final moments not on your own, but right up close with your competitors. And it's here, in the dreaded call room, that the mind games go into overdrive. From my perspective, these are the seven guys that are I've got to do battle against that are trying, you know, standing in my way to, to achieve my objective of a gold medal. I never thought it was personal. You know, a lot of people, I didn't think they were trying to destroy my dreams or they're trying to beat me. They were simply trying to win. I don't own winning. I just wanted to win. The interesting thing is that champion athletes, top athletes, gold medal athletes, the gold medal mindset, if you like, that type of athlete will not see pressure as a problem they will perceive it as a privilege. I quite enjoyed it actually because the pressure is so high at that point, all other things being equal. It's the person who handles that moment and the pressure at that particular time best that that's going to have their best performance. There was one competitor, he asked us all, you know, to, to pray together. I'm not going to pray with you. And most of the guys did it. I didn't do it. I'm not going to do that. I'm, <laughs> I'm about to go to battle. The brutal irony of elite sport is that however good you are, however many sacrifices you've made, it all counts for nothing if you can't deliver when it really matters. Four years of preparation for just a few defining moments of action. This is, in many ways, the ultimate sliding doors moment. So the key question is, do the psychological rituals that athletes use in the dressing room and continue to use right out here in the arena actually work? In short, what do we really know about the dark art of performance psychology? You're already under a tremendous amount of pressure in knowing the significance of the moment and this is what you've been training for for so very long and this is what you've been preparing for and it's a dream come true to be there and now you're just that close. You will always have an internal voice saying, this is dangerous, run away, run away. A psychologist would always say, you control the controllables. You're not in control of the weather, you're not in control of the opposition, you're not in control of the TV audience or the crowd or the event or the, you know, that's all beyond you. You can only control how you perform when the gun goes up. You narrow it all the way down to something incredibly simple. It's sort of ironic now as I've lost my faith, but my faith, I think, gave me perspective to somehow, to a degree, disassociate myself from the outcome. You have to do the best you can and then let the chips fall as they may. I can only be as good as I can be, and when I've crossed the line, I'll see what that got me. That's a very calming, focusing and quite inspiring thought. Performance psychology is, to a large extent, about the elimination of doubt. In many circumstances, doubt is a rather sensible thing. If someone's trying to flog you an insurance policy, it makes sense to doubt whether what they are saying is true. But in sport, doubt is catastrophic. If you don't believe you're going to nail a forehand or score a penalty, you're almost certain to miss. That's why visualising a brilliant performance is so important. It can help to eliminate doubt. Superstitions can do the same kind of thing. They provide reassurance and boost self-belief. 
Superstition is a very interesting phenomenon, particularly in the world of sports psychology, because what we're actually saying is thoughts become things, and what we think affects the way we feel, and the way we feel ultimately affects the way that we behave and ultimately in the sporting context perform. A similar kind of thing happens in the field of medicine. A sugar pill with no pharmacology whatsoever can have incredible effects reducing pain and anxiety, even eliminating nausea, so long as you believe it will. As Jonathan Edwards put it in a slightly different context, any belief can have astonishingly powerful effects providing it is held with sufficient conviction. Maybe that's the key here, is you need to find something that works for you. Every athlete is an individual, and you can, you can take out the training manual, you can take out the sports psychology book, and you can say, well, Michael Johnson did this, and Carl Lewis did this, and Muhammad Ali did this, and you can go on and on and on through the greats, but none of them are who you are, and you have to find your own way. Delivering under pressure is a rather brutal thing, but also a profoundly subjective one. Many athletes are overcome with nerves, others are afflicted with terrible self-doubt. Is it any wonder that they reach for the particular ritual that makes sense to them, that provides a sense of reassurance and control? Prayer, superstition, visualization, take your pick. What is certain is that that minute difference between victory and defeat on the biggest stage of all is often to be found not in skill or effort but in the recesses of the mind.